بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله we are now in the chapter of al munasik the chapter of Hajj and Umrah and this is from the book Zad al Mustaqna of Imam al Hajjawi في اختصار المقنع um, the notes that I'm mostly going to be relying upon for this part of the book are the notes from uh, Sheikh Mansour al Saqib uh, his book at taliq al muqni' ala zad al mustaqni' so if anybody gets to a stage where they can benefit from the arabic this uh, simultaneous translation that i'm doing from the reading will be very beneficial for that person um, so we go ahead with the bismillah and the barakah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kitab al manasik manasbat al bab the appropriateness of this chapter coming after everything else that we've studied. Sheikh Mansour, he says, لَمَّا ذَكَرَ الْمُؤَلِّفْ أَحْكَامُ الصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاءِ وَالصِّيَامِ وَمَا يَتَعَلَّقُ بِهَا نَاسْبَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يَذْكُرَ أَحْكَامُ الْحَجِّ إِذْ هُوَ رُكْنْ مِنْ أَرْكَانِ الْإِسْلَامِ So, after having mentioned the salah and the purification before that, the zakah and the fasting, then it's appropriate that we now speak about the rights of hajj and umrah because this is from the arkan, from the pillars of Islam. وَإِنَّمَا أَخَّرَهُ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةِ وَالصَّوْمِ وَالزَّكَاةِ لِأَمْرَيْنِ And the author and many authors, they delay the mentioning of Kitab al-Hajj or Kitab al-Munasik after the other pillars, pillars of Islam for two main reasons. Question to yourselves, uh, if anybody is with us, uh, what is from the reasons why the author and others delay mentioning the chapter of Hajj after the other pillars of Islam. طيب, from the answers that we can give is firstly لأنه لم يفرض إلا في آخر الأمر وبقية الأركان فردت قبله that Hajj and Umrah didn't become legislated until after the other pillars of Islam until the end part of the revelation and secondly لِأَنَّهُ لَا يَجِبُ فِي الْعُمْرِ إِلَّا مَرَّةً And it's not made obligatory on a person in his uh, lifespan except once. بِخِلَافِ الصَّوْمِ أَلَّذِي يَجِبُ فِي الْعَمْرِ يعني opposite to صوم, opposite to fasting, as opposed to fasting which is made obligatory every year. وَصَلَاءَ أَلَّتِي تَجِبُ فِي الْيَوْمِ خَمْسَ مَرَّاتٍ And also the prayer which is made obligatory five times every day. So those are from the reasons why the Hajj chapter is left till later on, till last of the chapters of worship. Well, Manasik, Jamal Mansak. Manasik is the plural of Mansak. So Kitab al Manasik comes as a plural of the word Mansak. And Mansak can be said bi Fatha Sin wa Kasriha. It can be said with a fatha on the scene mansak, or it can be said with a kasra as mansak. Wahua fi lugha, and it means linguistically, makanul ibada wa zamaniha. It pertains to the meaning of the place of worship and also the time frame of that worship. So we have, for example, in Surah Al Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wali kuli ummatin ja'alna mansakan yafkur uswallahi. So for every nation, we have made a mansak so that they may remember the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أي متعبدا يتعبدون فيه a place of worship and worship that they worship therein ثم سميت أمور الحج كلها مناسك and then all of the actions and the rituals of Hajj were given the name مناسك والمراد هنا and the intention here الحج والأمرة the intention is speaking about الحج and أمرة وذب الحدي وذبح الحدي and to slaughter the sacrificial animals. And the um, animal which is slaughtered, not as a part of the rites of Hajj, but rather uh, for the Eid celebration. And verily, the actions of Hajj were called Manasik. Because people go back and forth and they visit these places where the actions of Hajj and Umrah take place. The Sheikh, Sheikh Mansour he carries on, he says, Hajj Lugatan, Hajj linguistically, Bifatil Ha wa Kasiha, Hajj, whether you say it with a Fatha on the Ha or you say it with a Kasra, Al Hajj, 
it has the meaning of al qasd it has the meaning of that which you are seeking out that which has become your intention your objective wa shar'an and technically it has the meaning of at ta'abbudu lillahi ta'ala bi ada'i al manasik worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fulfilling the rites of hajj ala ma jaa fi sunnati an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon the way that was established by the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wal umratu lughatan an umra linguistically has the meaning of a ziyara has the meaning of visiting وشرعاً and technically its meaning in the legislation is التعبد لله تعالى بأداء المناسك العمرة كما جاء في سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم it is to worship Allah سبحانه وتعالى by doing the rituals of Umrah as they came in the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم now stepping away from Sheikh Mansour's explanation for a moment Sheikh Abd Salam al Shawair he mentioned some interesting points here in his explanation. And he said, The reason why some of the ulama they chose to mention in their books uh, Manasik instead of Kitabul Hajj, they said Kitabul Manasik instead of Kitabul Hajj. Why? Because this book also contains issues which are not pertaining directly to Hajj and Umrah. So that's why they call it Kitabul Manasik instead of Kitabul Hajj. For example, ومن ذلك أن فيه حديث عن الهدي. So for example, there is a discussion about the Hadi, about the sacrifice. والهدي قد يكون بغير سبب الحج والعمرة. An Hadi can sometimes be not due to the reason of Hajj or Umrah. وإنما يكون تطوعا من الهدي. For example, it is a voluntary deed that is given from the one who is sacrificing. ومن ذلك and also as an example أن في حديث عن حرم المدينة وأحكامه In it there is a discussion pertaining to the sanctity of Medina and the rulings pertaining to Medina وهذا من المناسك and this is also from the is this is also from um, the منسك the term منسك أي الموضع الذي له أحكامه meaning the referring to the place uh, where the rituals are performed and uh, rulings pertaining to that. وَمِنْ ذَلِكَ فِيهِ حَدِيثٍ عَنْ زِيَارَةِ مَسْجِدِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ And from that also is the fact that there is a discussion pertaining to the visiting of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's masjid وَالْأَحْكَامَ الْمُتَعَلِّقَ بِزِيَارَةِ لِمَسْجِدِهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ And rulings pertaining to visiting the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم وَهَذِهِ لَيْسَتْ دَاخِلَةً فِي الْحَجْ وَالْعُمْرَةِ And these are not a part of the rituals of Hajj and Umrah فَنَاسَبَ أَن تَكُونَ مِنَ الْمَنَاسِكِ So it's appropriate that the name Al-Manasik is used rather than Hajj and Umrah. So Shaykh Abdul Salam al was explaining for us, Hafidahullah, why some of the ulama, they use the term Kitab Al-Manasik instead of Kitab Al-Hajj wal Umrah. Going back to Shaykh Mansour, Hafidahullah, he says, Al-Aslu fi wujub al-Hajj al-Kitab wa sunnah wa al-Ijma'ah. The foundations in legislation for the Hajj and Umrah is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and is the ijma, the consensus of the Muslims. So we have for example in Surah Ali Imran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حَجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاءَ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌ عَنِ الْعَالَمِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed it, on, decreed it, made it obligatory upon the people that they make hajj to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Whomsoever amongst them has the ability to do so. And whoever disbelieves in Allah and in this right of worship, then verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of any need from any of his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have in the sunnah the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu in Bukhari and Muslim, the famous hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Bunya al-Islamu ala khams that the Islam was built upon five pillars and from them is mentioned Al-Hajj. The Hajj is a pillar from the five that Islam is built upon. We have the Hadith in Sahih Muslim which is narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ فَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ الْحَجْ فَهُجُّ that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said O oh people, Hajj has been made obligatory upon you so perform the Hajj. فَقَالَ رَجْمٌ أَكُلُّ عَامٍ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ 
A man stood up and he said, Oh Prophet of Allah, is that going to be every year? فَسَكَتَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ حَتَّى قَالَهَا ثَلَاثًا So the Prophet وسلم, reminds, remained silent until that person repeated the same question three times. فَقَالْ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. And then the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, لَهُ قُلْتُ نَعْمْ لَا وَجِبَتْ وَلَمَّا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Had I said yes, it would have become obligatory upon you every year and you would not have been able to fulfill that obligation. And also we have, as we mentioned, al-ijma' yani consensus of the ulama Mun'aqidun ala fardiyatihi There is a consensus which has been established uh, upon its obligation Naqalahu ibn Mundir wa ibn Hazm wa ghayrihima From them who brought forth this consensus uh, of the ulama is Imam ibn Mundir and Imam ibn Hazm and other than them Rahmatullah alayhim ajma'in The author, he says قوله الحج والعمرة واجبان that حج and عمرة are obligatory حج and عمرة are obligatory they are واجب from the evidence of this we have the hadith in um, Ahmed and Ibn Majah narrated by Aisha رضي الله عنها she said uh, it was said to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم هل على نساء جهاد is there a jihad upon the women أو رسول الله so the Prophet said, نعم عليهن جهاد لا قتال فيه والحج الحج والعمرة. Yes, upon them is a jihad wherein there is no fighting that takes place. الحج and عمرة. فقوله عليهن. So the important point here that Sheikh Mansoor mentions is the word عليهن upon them. من الفاد التي تدل على الوجوب. These are wordings. Upon them, alayhinna is a wording which points and alludes to the fact that it's obligatory. كما هو معلوم في أصول الفقه As it is well known and established in the science of أصول الفقه The fundamentals, fundamental rules of fiqh. So Imam Ahmed and Imam Abi Dawood They have the hadith of Abi Razain al-Aqili al Who said that he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, Ya Rasulullah, inna abi shaykhun kabirun la yastati'u al-hajj. O oh, Messenger of Allah, my father is an old man. He's unable to do hajj. Wala al-umrah, nor can he do umrah. Wala al-dha'na, nor can he travel. Faqala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ihjuj an abika wa'tamir. Make hajj on behalf of your father and make umrah on behalf of your father. Wa amma al-wajub al-umrah, as pertaining to the, regard, as pertaining to the obligation of Umrah فلأن الأمر للوجوب because a command points to it being obligatory وقد عطفها على الحج and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم connected between Hajj and Umrah with the wow al-atf okay the wow of connection between Hajj and Umrah so this therefore gives it the same ruling والأصل التساوي بين المعطوف والمعطوف عليه and the the original ruling or the fundamental ruling is that between uh, the two when uh, wawul atf is used, the thing that becomes before the wow and that which becomes after the wow, then they are equal in ruling. Qala ibn Abbas, ibn Abbas in radiyallahu anhumah, he said, innaha laqarinatul hajji fi kitabillah. Verily, Umrah is the companion of hajj in the good book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Ahmad, he said, لا أعلم في إيجاب العمرة حديث أجود من هذا وأصح منه. I do not know in the uh, in the obligation of عمرة a hadith which is more sound than this hadith which we just mentioned. The hadith of Abi Razin al aqili Another riwaya in the madhab of Imam Ahmad أن العمرة مستحبة واختارها ابن تيمة is that عمرة is not wajib, is not obligatory rather it is مستحب The author he said على المسلم الحر المكلف القادر upon the Muslim who is حر, who is free, who is مكلف okay, the one who is um, legislated with acts of worship that acts of worship are upon him or her to do and Al-Qadir, and the one who has the ability. Sheikh Mansour, he says, يَشْتَرِطُ لِوَجُوبِ الْحَجِّ وَالْعُمْرَةِ شُرُوطِ So, for Hajj and Umrah to be obligatory, there are conditions. The first of them is Al-Islam. فَغَيْرُ الْمُسْلِمْ لَا يَسِحِهُ مِنْهُ الْحَجِّ لِأَنَّهُ فَاقِدْ لِشَرْطِ السِّحَةِ وَهُوَ الْإِسْلَامِ So, for um, uh, one who is a, a non-Muslim, then Islam is not going to be obligatory upon him, nor is it going to be accepted from him. 
as valid if he did manage to do it because he has not entered into the fold of Islam. The second of these conditions is al hurriya hurriya freedom. فَغَيْرُ الْحُرْ So other than the free, لا يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِمْ الْحَجْ Because hajj is not going to be obligatory upon one who is not free. وَالْإِلَّةُ And the reason for this, أن الْحَجْ مِنْ شُرُوطِهِ الْإِسْتِطَاعَةِ That from the conditions of hajj is istita'a, is ability. وَالْرَقِيقُ غَيْرُ مُسْتَطِيعَ And the one who is enslaved in bondage is not able, he doesn't have ability. لِأَنَّهُ لَا يَمْلِكُ شَيْئًا فَمَالُهُ لِسَيِّدِهِ For verily all of his wealth is owned uh, by his master. A third condition is a taklif. A taklif meaning, as we said, mukallaf, the one who is baligh and aqil, the one who, is, who has reached the age of maturity, and who has his uh, mental faculties about him. This is the person who's endowed or who is made obligatory upon them to fulfill the acts of worship that Allah has made obligatory upon them. So the one who is baligh, the one who has reached the age of maturity, and the one who is aqil, the one who has his mental faculties with him. So we have the hadith in Abi Dawood, and uh, Imam Ahmed also narrates, Rufi al-Qalam anil thalath anil majnoon hatta yafiq, that the pen has been lifted from three, the Prophet ﷺ said, and one of them was, the first of them was from the, um, from the insane until he regains his faculties of comprehension. And from the one who is asleep until he wakes up. And from the one who is a child until he reaches the age of having a wet dream, which is also known as the age of being, uh, having reached puberty. A fourth condition is al Qudra. Qudra means like the ability. فَغَيْرُ الْقَادِ لَا يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ الْحَجِّ So one who is not qadir, one who doesn't have the ability, then hajj is not obligatory upon him. وَالْقَادِرْ هُنَا يُرَاضْ بِهِ And what is meant by qadir here is al-qadir بِبَدْنِهِ وَمَالِهِ That the person has the ability pertaining to wealth and the ability pertaining to his body. فَيَكُونُ إِنْدَهُ مَالْ أَلَّذِي يُنْفِقُهُ فِي حَجِّهِ So he has money that he is able to cover the expenses of his hajj with. وَبَدْنِهِ يَقْوَى عَلَى ذَلِكَ And also his body has the ability to withstand the demands made uh, on it for fulfilling the rituals of hajj. The author, he says, قَوْلُهُ فِي عُمْرِهِ مَرَّةً That it's obligatory to do hajj and umrah once in the lifetime. And the evidence pertaining to this is the hadith of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu in Sahih Muslim, where the Prophet sallallahu said, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ قَدْ فَرَضَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ الْحَجِّ فَحُجُّوا So the Prophet sallallahu said, O oh people, hajj has been made obligatory upon you, so fulfill the hajj. So a man, he stood up and he said, أَكُلُّ عَامٍ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Is that going to be every year, O Messenger of Allah? فَسَكَتَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم حَتَّى قَالَهَا ثَلَاثِ So the Prophet sallallahu remained silent until the person said it three times. فَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم لَوْ قُلْتُ نَعْمْ لَا وَاجَبَتْ وَلَمَّا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ The Prophet sallallahu said, had I said yes, it would have become obligatory upon you and you wouldn't have been able to do it. Sheikh Mansour, he says, هذا من يسر شرعيتي وسماحتها This is from the ease of the sharia and from the benevolence of the sharia. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَعْمُرْ إِبَادَهُ بِمَا يَشَقُّ عَلَيْهِمْ مُشَقَّةً غَيْرَ مَحْتَمِلَةً For verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't make it obligatory upon his creation that which is difficult a difficulty that they are unable to bear. وَلَوْ أَمْرَ جَمِيعَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ بِالْحَجْ كُلُّ عَامْ لَكَانَ فِي ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْمُشَقَّةِ وَالْحَرْجِ وَالضِّيقْ مَا لَا يَعْلَمُهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ And had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact made it obligatory every year for the Muslims to do hajj, they would have been in that difficulty and hardship and tightness, that which none would know its reality except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from the mercy of Allah azza wa jal, he didn't make it obligatory every year. Question to yourselves, when might it be wajib for a person to do hajj more than once in his lifetime? We established the rule that it's only once in a lifetime. When might it be obligatory to do it more than once? And this question was posed by Sheikh Amr Bahjat. Okay, so when it might be wajib to do hajj more than once, if somebody has uh, made a vow, for example, to do the hajj more than once, right? Or, for example, if somebody had uh, spoiled their hajj by doing something which breaks 
invalidates the Hajj, they would have to complete the Hajj that they were doing, which they invalidated, and then they would have to do another Hajj in the coming year. The author, he says, Al al immediately, that the Hajj and the Umrah, it has to be done immediately. Sheikh Mansour, he says, إِذَا تَوَافَضَتْ شُرُطُ الْحَجِّ فَإِنَّهُ يَجِبُ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمْ أَنْ يَحُجَّ عَلَى فَوْرْ عَلَى الْفَوْرْ وَلَا يُؤَخِّرْ That if the person has the conditions which we mentioned just a few moments ago, if he fulfills those conditions, that he finds himself with those conditions of ability, etc., then Hajj becomes wajib upon him على الفور, that he has to do it immediately. What's the evidence for this? In Sahih Muslim, we have the hadith for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. الحج فحجوا, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Verily Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made Hajj obligatory upon you, so go ahead and fulfill the Hajj. So how is this a proof that it has to be done على الفور immediately? وَمِنَ الْمُقَرِّرِ in the الْجَمْهُورِ فِي أُصُولِ الْفِقْءِ أَنَّ الْأَمْرِ يَقْتَدِ الْفَوْرِيَّةِ It's been established with the majority of the scholars of Asul al-Fiqh, the science of Asul al-Fiqh, that they said al-Amr, the command, yaqtadi al fawriya that a command from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dictates that it be done immediately, laysa ala tarakhi, not that it can be delayed to a later time. Imam Ahmed mentions in the hadith of Ibn, Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, ta'ajjalu, ta'ajjalu ila al hajji Yani, be quick and hasten to do the Hajj al fariḍa pertaining to the obligatory Hajj. فَإِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ لَا يَدْرِي مَا يَعْرِضُ لَهُ For verily one of you doesn't know what, might, what he may be exposed to or what, what he might come across in life that would prevent him from doing the Hajj later on. And this is an extremely important principle that we shouldn't be from those who delay, procrastinate, pertaining to the fulfilling of our obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because as you know, procrastination is a weapon that shaitan uses to keep us away from doing the obligations and to keep us away from surpassing the obligations with voluntary deeds and increasing in iman. He will come to us and whisper, us, whisper to us, you don't need to do it now, do it later. You have more time, but rather the one who is aqil, the one who has intelligence with him, would be rushing to do the good deeds because he knows that anything could happen to him to take away from him the opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to him to do these good deeds. <coughs> the author, he said, فَإِنْ زَالَ الرِّقْءُ وَالْجُنُونُ وَصِبَ فِي الْحَجْ بِالْعَرَفَةِ The author now, he's talking about that the, those categories of people that Hajj is not obligatory upon them due to a mani', due to something which is preventing them from doing the Hajj. And if these mawani', if these preventative uh, issues are removed from the person, then now what is the person's situation? So he said, فَإِنْ زَالَ الرِّقْ If the person's, uh, what's the English word? Bond, bondage and slavery is removed from him. وَالْجُنُونَ Or the person was ment mentally incapable and now his mental faculty has returned to him. وَصِبَا And صِبَا is that the person was under the age of puberty but then they, a, a day later, they reach, for example, the age of puberty. Fil Hajj bi Arafah. So if this took place before the day of Arafah was complete, wa fil Umrati qabla tawafiha, wa fil Umrati qabla tawafiha, and in the ritual of Umrah before its tawaf, sahha fardan, then the person's Hajj would be valid as the obligatory hajj which is, which is required in Islam. Sheikh Mansour, he explains, إِذَا صَرَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْوُجُوبِ فِي أَثْنَاءِ الْحَجِّ If the person becomes from those who hajj is obligatory upon them during the rituals of hajj, during the time of hajj, بِأَنْ بَلَغَ صبي. For example, the underage child now has reached the age of puberty. Or the one who was enslaved has been freed. Or the one who was incapable of thinking has his mental faculties returned to him. Then its ruling is going to be in this situation as follows. Number one, if that took place, that the things which were preventing the person from Hajj being obligatory upon them, these were removed on the day of Arafah during 
the time of Arafah or بعد الوقوف وفي وقته or after the people have finished standing at Arafah but yet the time of Arafah which means until Fajr remains according to this opinion right so it's either going to be that these mawani' these preventative things have been removed during the time of Arafah or when the people leave Arafah but it was still possible for the person to go to Arafah because the time was before Fajr of the next day then that would suffice him as having his Hajj valid as the obligatory Hajj of his Islam so again to repeat as long as he stood in Arafah before Talu' al-Fajr before the Fajr the next morning had um, come about then his Hajj would be valid okay so the person who was prevented from doing Hajj because they were under age or was prevented from doing Hajj because they didn't have the faculties uh, in the, the mental capability or they were prevented from Hajj because they were enslaved then suddenly these were removed from them and they are then able to do the Hajj as long as they stood in Arafah for a portion of time before the sun rose the next day Secondly, in fata dhalika lam yudzi'hum li'annahu fata ruqan al-wuquf bi'arafah But however, if the person didn't manage to stand in, in the plain of Arafah for the time that we mentioned, then his hajj is not going to be valid. Amma bi niswatin lil-umrah As pertaining to umrah, fa'in waqa'a dhalika qabla shurufi tawaf al-umrah If the person had those impediments removed from them, before the tawaf al-umrah فَإِنَّهَا تَصِحُّ فَرْضًا وَإِنْ وَقَعَ بَعْدَهُ أَوْ فِي أَثْنَائِهِ فَلَا تَكُونُ فَرْضًا وَلَوْ أَعَادَهُ Then the person as long as he or she um, became a person who is obligatory upon before the tawaf al-arafah then that would be an umrah which is before the tawaf of umrah then that would be the umrah which is valid for that person however if that happened after the tawaf then that umrah is not going to be valid even if the person repeated the tawaf okay so it's only valid if the person becomes from ahlul wujub from the people of wujub before the tawaf of umrah the author he says for the one who is under the age of puberty or the one who is enslaved, if they do the Hajj, then for them it's not going to be valid as an obligatory Hajj, rather it's going to be valid as a Nafal Hajj. If the Hajj Sabi or Raqiq, فإن حجهما صحي. So if the Sabi, the child, or the Raqiq, the one who is enslaved, makes Hajj, فإن حجهما صحي. Then verily the Hajj would be correct in terms of uh, Islamic legislation, in terms of Fiqh, the uh, Hajj would be correct. لكنه يقع نفلا. But but it falls or it comes about as being nafil وَلَا يُجْزِئُهُمَا عَنْ حَجَّةِ الْإِسْلَامِ and it doesn't suffice them from the hajj of Islam which is the obligatory hajj أَمَّا كَوْنُهُ يُصِحُّ مِنْهُمَا as for it being valid from them then this is based on the hadith in Sahih Muslim Ibn Abbas رضي الله عنهما said أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لقيا ركبا بروحائي that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم لَقِيَ رَكْبًا بِرَوْحَائِ That uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ came upon a rider in this place known as Rawha فَرَفَعَتْ إِلَيْهِ إِمْرَأَةٌ صَبِيًّا So uh, a woman, she raised a child to the Prophet ﷺ فَقَالَتْ And she said أَلِهَذَا حَجْ Is the Hajj uh, due upon, is the Hajj valid or due upon this, um, this child? Not due, is their hajj valid for this child? فَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, نَعْمْ وَلَكِي أَجْرٌ Yes, and for you there would be the reward. Okay, so that shows that for the one who hajj is not obligatory upon, like the one who is a child, like the one who is enslaved, then if they were to do it, then their hajj would be valid, but it wouldn't be valid in terms of an obligatory hajj. It would be valid as a nafil hajj. وَأَمَّا كَوْنُهُ لَا يَجْبُ عَلَيْهِمَا And due to the fact uh, as a, as a fact that it's not obligatory upon them because the sabi is not mukallaf as we mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet that the pen has been lifted from three and from them was mentioned the underaged of puberty and from them was mentioned the one who has lost their faculties and from them was mentioned the one who is sleeping 
وأما العبد فلأن مدته هي وأما العبد فلأن مدته ما and pertaining to the slave because the duration of Hajj al-Umrah أي حج العمرة تطول فلم يجب على العبد is is long in length therefore it's not going to be obligatory upon the slave لما فيه ما من إبطال حق سيده due to what it contains of taking away the rights of his owner because the owner needs him to do work etc so the slave being absent from a, for a long period of time to fulfill the umrah and the hajj it would mean that this takes away the rights of the slave therefore the rights of the owner therefore it's not obligatory upon the slave and pertaining to why it falls as a nafal and it doesn't fall as a obligatory hajj if the slave and the underage perform it because in the hadith of Ibn Khazayma and Al-Hakim also narrated and Ibn Mulaqan he said that the hadith is sahih قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أيما صبي حج ثم بلغ الحنثة فعليه أن يحج حجة أخرى whatsoever child makes hajj and then he reaches hanth, then he reaches puberty, then upon him is to make another hajj. Upon him is to make another hajj. So the hadith is alluding to the fact that if the child does the hajj, then his hajj is not going to equate the obligatory hajj which is required in Islam. Because they are not from the people of taklif, therefore it doesn't fall, it doesn't come about as a fard. The author, he says, قوله هو القادر And the one who has the ability Talking now about the ability Who is the one that has the ability? من أمكنه الرقوب The one who is able to write ووجد زادا And the one who has زاد Provisions وراحلة صالحين لمثله And he has um, a riding beast Or he has transportation Which is The transportation as well as the provisions Have to be صالحين لمثله have to be appropriate for his like of economic status so Sheikh Masuri says القادر من توفر فيه أمران the قادر the one who is able is the one who is found in him two matters the first of them أن يمكنه ركوب الرواحل that it's that he has the ability to ride the riding beast فلا يكون كبيرا so he shouldn't be somebody who is too old أو مريضا أو somebody who is sick لا يقدر لا يقدر على الركوب that because of the old age or due to a sickness they're unable to ride فغير القادر لا يجب عليه الحج so if the one who's if the one due to this the sickness or the old age is unable to ride then this means that he's غير القادر he's not one who is قادر then حج is not going to be obligatory upon him وهذا كان موجودا في وقت الرواحل and this used to be present in the times when people would ride camels donkeys etc أما اليوم فمع وجود الطائرات وسيارات أصبح أمرا ميسورا أصبح الأمر الأمر ميسورا As for today with the provision of uh, aeroplanes and the provision of um, cars then this matter is now easy بحمد الله by the praise of Allah سبحانه وتعالى لكن قد يكون عدم القدرة في التنقل بين المشاعر وهذا موجود However Sheikh Mansour's said though we have transport and people don't have to ride the beasts anymore which means that they don't have the excuse of saying that it's too difficult for them however they may still say that it's too difficult for them because they have to walk between um, uh, between the rights of Hajj and Umrah from one right to the next right like making the Tawaf, making the Sa'i stoning uh, for on the three different days this may be too difficult for them and if that is the case, then they don't have to make Hajj. A second matter, and yajid zad wa rahila asalihain limithlihi that they should find a zad, they should find provisions, which and a rahila, and a and a mode of transportation, which is appropriate for their economic status. So zad provisions, what he means by this, ma yatazawud bihi al musafir fi safrihi that which is used by the traveller in his journey, min al taam wa sharab wa malbas wa nahwihi from food, drink, and clothing. So all of this should be appropriate to his economic status. Wa rahila and the rahila wasila tu tnaqul allati yistakhdimuha wa yarkabu wa yarkabuha fi fi safar. The modes of transportation 
which are used by a person in his journey. Lama ja'a fi hadith Ibn Umar, because it came in the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, as narrated by Al-Hakim and in Nisa and others, that a person came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, faqal, ya Rasulullah, ma yujibu al-hajj, what makes hajj obligatory? Qal sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, azadu wa rahilatu. That you have zad, that you have provisions, and that you have a rahila, that you have a mode of transportation. وَمَعْنَى قَوْلُهُ الصَّالِحَيْنِ صَالِحَيْنِ لِمِثْلِهِ And the meaning of the author's statement that it should be appropriate, appropriate for his economic status أي تَكُونُ الرَّاحِلَةُ لَائِقَةٌ بِقَدْرِهِ وَمَكَانَتِهِ That the, that the um, provisions and the transportation are appropriate for his status Yes, that's the best translation for his status فَلَوْ كَانَ شَرِيفًا ذَا جَاهٍ وَلَمْ يَجِدْ إِلَّا رَاحِتًا رَاحِلَةً لَا تُصْلِحُ لِمِثْلِهِ فَلَا يَجِبُ عَلَيْهِ So if he was a person of status, okay, in his society, uh, and he couldn't find a transportation which was appropriate for his status and his economic status, then Hajj would not be obligatory upon him according to this opinion of the Madhab. وَالْإِلَّةُ إِشْتِرَاطُ ذَلِكَ And the reason for making this a condition أَنَّهُ يَتَعَلَّقُ بِهِ أَمْرٌ شَرْعِي because this is pertaining to a, sh a, a, a Sharia legislative matter. فَأْتُبِرَ فِيهِ So consideration, consideration is given to the appropriateness of the Zad and the Rahila. فَالْنَفَقَةُ وَسُكْنَ فِي حَقِّ الزَّوْجَةِ For example, like the spending which is required upon the wife and the housing which is required upon the wife, وَلِأَنَّ فِي تَكْلِيفَ الْإِنسَانِ مَا لَا يُسْلِحُ لَهُ ضَرَّرًا عَلَيْهِ Like for example, if the, if the spending upon the wife in terms of um, her daily needs, her fundamental needs and the housing that is required does not befit her status in society, then this would not be appropriate because it would be harmful to her. Likewise, the one who is taking the Hajj, if he doesn't have the transportation and the food and the clothing which is appropriate to his economic status, then this will be harmful to that person. The author, he says, After the completion of the, after the qada' al-wajibat, meaning after the person has fulfilled his obligatory spending in the light of the Sharia and also uh, any nafaqat, any spending that he has to make upon his family والحوائج الأصلية and any spending that he has to make in order to ensure that he has his fundamental needs for life Sheikh Mansour he says number one قضاء, الح... قضاء الواجبات what does it mean قضاء الواجبات المراد بها الديون لله تعالى that which is owed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of zakah for example or a vow that has been made and it's made based upon monetary value or للآدميين or something which is owed to the children of Adam from a loan that has to be repaid for example فيدخل فيها النفقات الواجبة للزوجة والأقارب so enters into this matter that obligatory spending which is owed to a wife or is owed to relatives meaning that which has to be spent upon them uh, for their needs or that which is owed to them والكفارات and that which is owed as an expiation والنذور and that which is owed as vows والديون and debts ونحو ذلك and similar to that وعلى هذا so based upon this فلو كان عليه دين فلا يجب عليه الحج حتى يغضيه so if a person had a debt then it's not incumbent upon him to make hajj until he fulfills that debt which was upon him لأن ذمته مشغولة به because verily his his person or his Islamic responsibility is busy with paying the debt. وَبِهِ حَاجَةٌ إِلَى بَرَاءَتِهَا And he has the need to, to remove that debt from him and to fulfill that debt. Secondly, النفقات الشرعيتي النفقات based الشرعيتي legislated by the Sharia. المراد بها the meaning or the intent of this النفقات التي يحتاجها للإنفاق على نفسه وعلى أولاده من غير إسراف ولا تبذير the, that spending which he has to spend upon himself and he has to spend upon his children and his family without having israf ولا تبذير without having um, without spending carelessly without spending too much without need 
وعلى هذا لو كانت نفقته ألف ريال وحجه يكلف ألف ريال. So based upon this, if his fundamental spending upon himself and his family was a thousand riyals, and Hajj was going to cost him a thousand riyals, فلا بد أن يكون واجبا لألفين ريال. Then it's imperative that he finds two thousand riyals, not just one thousand. وإلا فلا يجب عليه الحج. If not, if he cannot find the 2,000 riyals, then Hajj is not obligatory upon him. So Sheikh Mansour is explaining that if he has fundamental needs and his finances don't, don't cover those fundamental needs, but they can cover the Hajj, then he doesn't have to go on to Hajj unless and until his fundamental needs are covered. وَأَمَّا كَوْنُهُمَا فَاضِلَيْنِ عَلَى مُؤُنَتِهِ وَمُؤُنَتِ إِيَالِهِ and as for the consideration that it should be above and beyond his basic needs and the needs of basic needs of his family that is because when a person has a debt he doesn't have to use his money to pay the debt back if the money that he has is for his fundamental needs for himself and his family so if he's allowed to delay his debt because he only has enough money for his fundamental uh, needs um, so the Sheikh, he says, Sheikh Mansour, he says, therefore, that he fulfills his fundamental needs instead of going to Hajj is from Tariq al Awla or Bab al Awla, is even more so. So, again, if the person has fundamental needs of a certain amount, right, and he only has that much money, but he has a debt that he needs to pay, he doesn't have to spend that money to pay back the debt because this is his fundamental needs. And if it's the case that he can delay the payment of his debt, then delaying the uh, fulfillment of Hajj is min bab al-awla, is more so. And we have in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu in Ahmad and Abi Dawood, kafa bil mar'i ithman, it's enough for a person that he is sinful, and yudayya man yaqood, that he causes the ones that he's responsible for in terms of spending upon them, that, they, that their needs be lost. Okay, so due to that, a person will fall into sin. Sheikh Mansour, he mentions a third point, Al-Hawaj Al-Asliya. Hawaj Al-Asliya, the fundamental needs, Al-Murad Biha, Ma Yahtajuhu Al-Insan, Wa La Budda Minha. That which a person needs, and there is no escape from that need. Wa Hadi Takhtalifu Min Shaks Ila Akhir. And this is different from one person to the next. Lakin Hunaka Hawaj Yattafiqu Fiha Al Jamil. Lakin, but there are those needs which all share, and all are in the same boat pertaining to. Mithalhu, a Sayara. For example, a car, والمسكن, and housing, والفرش, and furniture, وآلات الكهربائية اللازمة ونحوها, and those fundamental uh, electrical items which are required in a house. فهذه حوائج يحتاجها كل أحد. So these fundamental needs, every single person requires them. فلو قال عندي مال, so if a person said I have money, ولا أدري هل أشتري به ثلاجة محتاج محتاجا إليها مثلا. So he says, I have money, but I don't know, should I go ahead and buy a fridge that I am in need of? Or should I make hajj? Or he says, ما عندي مال, I don't have money. فهل عبيء المكيفات أو السيارة أو الفرن لأحج بقيمتها? So I don't have money, liquid cash, but I have air conditioners, and I have a car, and I have a fridge, for example. Should I go ahead? Should I go ahead and sell off these things in order to generate money for the Hajj? So we say, فنقول لا. We say no. لأن هذه الحوائج الأصلية, because these are fundamental needs, لا غنى لك عنها. You have no escape from them. They are fundamental needs. You are unable to be free from these fundamental needs. لكن, however, Sheikh Mansour said. إن كانت زائدة عن الحاجة فنعم. However, if the needs are beyond your fundamental needs, then yes, you should sell them to generate liquid cash. كما لو كان عنده سيارتان. Like for example, a person has two cars. ولا يحتاج إلى واحدة. And he doesn't need one of them. ونحو ذلك. So in this situation, uh, he should go ahead and sell one of the cars to generate the liquid cash, which would enable him to go ahead and perform the Hajj. Um, I think we'll stop here with the gap without going any further because 45 minutes is about as much as we can concentrate. Um, as mentioned by uh, science and pedagogical experts, uh, 45 minutes is a good uh, time frame 
for us to concentrate. So we'll stop here. Anything which was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and Shaytan. If you have any questions that you need to ask, then please feel free. Taib, no questions inshallah. Jazakallah uh, khair. May Allah make this heavy now scale of good deeds. And we hope to see you next week inshallah. Do go back and always review the videos for uh, enhancing and improving your comprehension. And Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.